welcome to another beer review and uh, this is a bit of a strange one because I'm sure I've actually reviewed this. I, I remember reviewing it and filming it but for some strange reason it's not on the channel. So either I've uploaded it and it's disappeared or I didn't upload it. So I honestly really don't know. But anyway, I'm going to review it again because there's some other ones I'd want to review as, as part of this kind of brewery. Now this brewery is quite a well-known brewery in the south of England and uh, it had a good reputation. I suppose it's into some uh, aspects it still does have a good reputation but it did have a really good reputation for making kind of more traditional beers and things like that and uh, making them well. The problem is though they've been taken over and they're now part of the Carlsbergs kind of a conglomerate and uh, well let's see if it actually makes it good or bad. Usually, if Carlsberg gets a hold of you, it's usually not a good thing. It's good for them, but not really good for the actual drinkers or the people who maybe enjoy that kind of brand or beers from that brewery. Because there's a good chance they'll either shut that brewery or they will change the kind of a recipe to kind of make it suit their accountants, really. So they make maximum profit and things like that. But what we're going to do today is, is here we go. The Hobgoblin Ruby Beer. It's a 4.5% and it comes in a 500ml can. One of the good things, I would say, it's actually, I would call it a, probably a more mainstream beer because you can get it everywhere now and this is only 4, 4 no, 3.99, sorry. It's 3.99 for 4 cans. So it's just under a pound a can. The problem is if it's a good beer, then that's a good bargain. If it's a crap beer, then maybe not such a good price because at the end of the day, no matter what price you put on it, a bad beer is a bad beer. So, let's see what it's like. But I, I'm sure I've done it because I've the gold one. I've done the golden ale. The Hobgoblin golden ale. And that's been on the site. So, on YouTube. So, let's see what this one is like. Um, I have uh, drunk it in the past. I haven't drunk it recently. So, let's get it poured and find out if it's good, bad or indifferent. Now there is some spiel on the side of the can, so I'll read that out to you because we all like it read out to us. See if you're having to do it. It's like it's almost like an audio book. Yeah, although I don't see this getting on audio, on audible. Sorry. Um, but anyway, let's see. It says it's the distinct ruby beer's sweet caramel and fruity aromas tease the taste buds. Oh, a bit of a little ray from the air. Expect a delicious full bodied toffee flavour and a fruity finish of figs, raisin and dates. Drink legendary. And it's uh, partly signed off by John Tilson, head brewer. And uh, yes, it's got all the kind of uh, websites and Facebook and everything else and all the kind of social media kind of uh, links and all that. But it just says Witchwood Brewery, Whitney, Oxfordshire. And of course, in there, it's part of the Carlsberg Breweries and JC Jacobson Grade 1. There we go. And of course, it's all down to the kind of uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, or Copenhagen. And there we go. So, marvellous. Well, that's how it's poured. And that's how you usually get it now. Sometimes you get a wee bit more ahead, other times you don't. At the end of the day, there's a little bit of lacing in the glass. It's a kind of darker, kind of ruby kind of colour. And uh, what do you smell? I smell malt. Funnily enough, you can get toffee and caramel flavours and these kind of like uh, kind of dried fruit kind of uh, flavours. That comes from malt. It doesn't come from hops. Now. You can get a lot of other things with hops. Hops can really work with this. And I just feel that, I'm going to go on a rant here, that a lot of brewers should really start working more with malts and getting a really good blend with the hops. I mean, I've got nothing against hops, but work together with them. Um, it's not just all about hops. So there we go. So I should enjoy this because I do like malty beers coming from Scotland. It's a kind of a normal thing. So cheers. Yeah, you're getting the malt flavours. 
you're getting the caramel, slight toffiness, you're getting a slight bitterness. Yeah, slight bitterness, but the bitterness is kind of almost mid -term. It's not actually... Uh, Yeah, it's quite well, well carbonated. Um, so it is. It's well carbonated. It's got quite a nice mouthfeel. It starts off when you get a bit of sweetness. Then you get ever so slight bitterness coming in the mid tongue. Then you're getting kind of a kind of slightly fruityish, but not sweet. But you're getting kind of the fruitiness, and then there's ever so slight kind of a. Bitterness again, just in the aftertaste, but very, very light, very, very light. So it's, I mean, it's not bitter in any way, shape, or form, but it does have some bitter notes to it that makes it interesting rather than either being all sweet or all bitter. There's a kind of a, a balance between the two, which is nice, but it is quite a light. I mean, it's not nothing heavy. I mean, you could drink quite a lot of these. Probably will. Um, so yeah. So yeah, you're getting a kind of a caramel start. Ever so slight bitterness as it transitions between the kind of caramel at the start to a kind of dried fruit, kind of like figs and raisins, kind of aftertaste. And uh, then it just tails off to ever so slight, very delicate kind of bitterness. So it feels like you're actually getting a bit more bitter mid tongue and a very light one at the very very end it's not sweet in any way there is sweet notes to it from that point of view but it gives more of an impression of sweetness rather than it actually being physically sweet so that's why so i mean a sweet beer is fine i have no problem with sweet beers but i can find them quite sickening this is not sickening this is a beer that you can get wired into and enjoy and yeah how does it compare um, to maybe the brews from the past um, I would probably say it's weaker in some ways I wouldn't say the flavours are so strong but I'll be honest I don't think that's a bad thing because with the flapers, flap, flapers, flap, what the hell is flapers? And oh, oh, God knows what's going on there. Flapers. Mm. Anyway, the flavors sometimes, if they're too strong, then it becomes less a, of a session beer and becomes more of a kind of sipping kind of beer or one to kind of savor and enjoy slowly and things like that. Whereas it's probably more of a session beer, more of one you can probably drink quite a lot of, but you're still getting the flavours, but they're just not as intense. So I'd say it's lost a bit of intensity with the flavours since obviously it's become more kind of mainstream, thanks to the Carlsberg. And it is more mainstream because this is sold everywhere for this type of kind of 3 99 price. And uh, they seem to be selling a heck of a lot of it. But it's actually not a bad beer. And for that price range, it does make it quite difficult. How would it see? I would say it's probably would come come down to kind of uh, competing with the likes of McEwen's, you know, McEwen's export because that's three ninety nine, and it's roughly I think it's roughly about four and a half percent as well. So it's really a kind of a direct kind of comparison. So to want a more kind of a Scottish kind of heavy, but both kind of strong kind of multi flavoured beers not strong in alcohol but more kind of than flavour so there is a good kind of strong kind of multi flavours to these beers and less kind of hoppy flavours or accents so that's what I mean I'm not talking about alcohol strains or things like that or flavour profiles but if you're thinking the balance they are more multi than they are hoppy and uh, yes I would say them two are kind of head to head so yes, I would compare this to the McEwen's export, which is made by, I think it's Marsons that actually make it. 
Um, well, of course, it's not made in Scotland at all. But yes, but this is supposed to be still made in uh, Oxfordshire. And yeah, it has the kind of right kind of flavour profiles as it says on the can. Mm. You can see it, it's gone a bit dead, but I don't know if that's actually the glass. That actually be the glass. But anyway, because some of my glasses just don't really hold a head, whereas other ones do, so it's a bit strange. But anyway, I'm digressing. What would I give it out of five? I would give this. For drinkability and everything else, I'm going to give it a 3.7. It's very drinkable. It's got some nice flavour profiles. It's well priced. It's easily to get. Well, especially in the UK, it's easy. For, easy, easy. What the heck is going on with my mouth today? It's easy for you to get. Whereas, maybe outside of the UK, a bit more difficult to get. But if you're in the UK, or you're visiting the UK, then yes, it's quite easy to find Hobgoblin. You'll get it in most supermarkets, and of course, some places will also really sell it on uh, draft. Now, I think it's a case as though it's a 4.5, I think it's higher if you get it in the bottle. I think it's a higher alcohol content. I need to check that out, but yes, I'm sure it's a little bit higher if you get it in the bottle. And I think if you get it a cask, i.e. draft, I think it's a little bit more again. So that's something to kind of obviously look out for. And, uh, but yeah, 3.7 out of 5. Nice balance to it. Nice tasting beer. And it's got the kind of flavour profiles that I enjoy. So it really is kind of, uh, kind of suiting my kind of uh, beer taste. Um, would I drink this over, say, McEwen's? Yes and no. It kind of depends, because there is some differences with them. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll get some McEwen's in some of these and actually put them as a head-to-head -head and kind of really go through the kind of flavour profiles as they are drinking them together. But I think with these type of beers, it depends what type of mood you're in. Um, so yes, I could drink this and really enjoy it some dates and then other nights I could drink McEwen's and really enjoy that more. So I think it just depends slightly what your mood's in and uh, I think sometimes it's a case as though your mind kind of plays tricks on you because you maybe drunk something and you've kind of enjoyed it at that time and you're thinking, mm, yeah, you know, and then of course you drink it again you think, yeah, it's nice, but not as enjoyable or it's not about the flavour profile that I kind of want tonight or I'd rather have and and yes so having them in your fridge or wherever you store your beer at these type of prices you can have them and uh, and store them I mean when, when is this out of date does it say on it so this goes out in October 2022 this is November, just the start of November. So you're talking about almost a year. So, I mean, you can have these type of beers, you know, in storage and uh, for the price of them, like, you know, £3.99, that means you've always got a good beer to have if you fancy one, or if somebody comes in, you've got some good beer to offer them. I'm not saying it's great beer or wonderful beer, but for run of the mill, kind of more mainstream, I'd say they are a lot better than, say, the likes of the kind of lager offerings. I mean, we did the kind of lagers of Stella Artois and Foster's and all these type of things and Budweiser and uh, Carling. I mean, okay, it, it's a different beer. It's an ale. It's not a, a, a lager and that type of stuff. But th there is more, a lot more flavour and a lot more character with a beer like this or like with... Um, would you call it uh, McEwen's Expo, than drinking the likes of Carling or Foster's. Now, obviously, if you don't like kind of ales and you like lagers, then that's a big problem. But that's the main issue is if they were having kind of mainstream lagers to this type of kind of standard of, of ale, then it wouldn't be so bad. 
You know what I mean? So, yeah. I think there's a disservice here. But yeah, so 3.7. Um, it's good to have them in the house, basically, for, for emergencies or, or special occasions like a fancy beer, which for me is always a special occasion. So every day is a special occasion. But anyway, that's us for this review. Thanks for watching. Cheers, and bye for now.